tonight we want to talk to you guys about just the practical side of what it takes and what you should be doing every single day if you want to build your business. And we're assuming that if you're in this room, you have huge goals um, and that you are working consistently and that you plan to go to the top of this company because we, we're passing around this sheet. It's called the Four Pillars. Well, it's called All In Daily IPA Sheet. But you guys have probably heard us talk about before how in this business, it's simply a set of skills that anybody can learn and get good at. Um, the key is consistency. It's not a matter of if you can be a diamond in this company. It's a matter of if you're willing to do what it takes. So tonight, we're going to share with you exactly what it takes if you want to go to the top. These are things that you need to be doing every single day to work your business like it's a business. If you work this like a business, it will pay you like a business. If you work it like a hobby, it'll pay you like a hobby. You can work your business part-time, but you cannot work it sometime if you are serious about growing it, okay? So we're gonna talk about the dailies. Yeah, so the only thing I would add to that, guys, is just, it's a, it, it starts with a decision in your brain to decide whether you're gonna do this or not. Um, if you wait and let your feelings dictate anything in life, you're not going to ever endeavor anything that's difficult. And so th this is not designed to be easy. If it were easy, it'd be sleazy and everybody would do it. But this is a very simple business. And I love that because the skills never change. You know, once you learn the four simple skills that we're going to talk about tonight and get good at them, you just repeat them and you teach other people to do the same. So your thoughts will determine your beliefs and your beliefs will determine your actions. So right now you have to check whatever you're telling yourself in your brain. If you're telling yourself, I think that I can do this, you can, and you're right. If you tell yourself, I don't think I can do this, I have this obstacle or that excuse, you're probably also right. So your thoughts will determine your beliefs and what you believe will determine what action you're willing to take on a daily basis. So you just, I mean, you're the only one that can control your thoughts and you can control them. So you definitely should have big goals with this opportunity. Uh, our team is in momentum like we have never been in before. Our company is also in company-wide momentum that we've never seen before. So you legit could not be joining at, or starting if you're just now starting to build your business at a better time. Yes. Okay. So there's only a few things in this business that actually make you money. Um, thinking about Plexus all day long is not one of them. Um, even though that feels like work, if you do that a lot, because I'm one of those who think a lot, who thinks a lot. Um, scrolling Facebook, that's not one of them that makes you money, although that's enjoyable. It's not actually income producing. So we talk a lot in this business about IPA, and that simply stands for income producing activity. So does everybody have one of these? I printed 40. It's coming. Y'all might have to share. All right. So, four main skills that you need to learn and master and get really good at if you want to be a jewel or a diamond in this company. Okay, so the first one is recruiting or enrolling. And there's several things that you need to be doing daily in order to be consistently enrolling people. The first thing you do in this business that is income producing for you is talking to new people about Plexus every single day that you have never talked to about Plexus before. And if the people are not initiating the conversation with you, then yes, you have to be willing to bring the conversation up with them. Um, there are a lot of people out there who are looking for what you are offering. You just have to be willing to start the conversation, okay? Um, so the, that's the first one. And we have on this sheet five new contacts. That means strike up a conversation with five new people about Plexus and give them some examples of like how to strike up a new, like if it's cold market, if it's warm market, like what do you say to somebody you've never, they, they didn't come to you, you need to bring it up. What are you going to say? Okay. So there are lots of different ways that you can approach somebody. It could be in person. It could be on social media. It could be on telephone. Um, there are lots of ways to be successful. But if you're just building this and you're in what we call your warm market, meaning you have people around you that you know and love that have never heard of Plexus or maybe just never heard of it from you, that's where I would start. I would start with the people who are closest to me who would just want to support me. And here's legit what I would say. Jackie, girl, listen, I thought of you today 
because ABC, because you're a new mama again, and I know exactly what that entails. I've done it four times, and I feel better than I ever have, and I was curious if you've ever heard of flexing. I mean, it could be something that's just so short, simple, to the point, very conversational, uh, but direct. You guys, people do not mind an agenda. They don't mind you reaching out to them with an agenda. What they mind is a hidden agenda. So don't reach out with this faux uh, relationship, all the fluff. Just reach out, connect, and get to your point. Um, another thing I would say is, hey, you know, hey, Jackie, hope you're doing great today. Hope the kiddos are well. How's the new baby? Hey, listen, I wanted to reach out because I read a testimony yesterday, and you came to my mind. I know that you've struggled with migraines or ABC, and I was just curious if you've ever heard of Plexus. And here's what I like to add. This may or may not be for you, and that's totally fine. But if I sent you some info to check out, would you take a look? It's very, I mean, it's not pressure. Hey, it may or may not be for you. I'm, I'm already giving her an out. May or may not. And I'm not emotionally attached to the outcome. I know when she responds, it's either going to be, yeah, I'm open to information about Plexus, or I'm not right now. And I'm okay either way. Yeah. So I love this first message formula. You might want to write this down. Um, if you have this formula memorized, then you won't ever lack for words when you go to bring it up with somebody. Hey, blank. I am really excited about this new thing because blank. Tell them why you're excited about it. Um, and I thought of you because blank. So I was just curious. If I, would you? Those are some magic words. I'm just curious. That makes it sound very no pressure. Do I need to talk slower? I forget what I said. Okay. Hey, blank. Hey, Susie. Um, I am really excited about this new thing because blank. And I thought of you because blank. Like, I thought you could benefit. I thought you might be excited, too, because last time we talked, you were thinking about being a stay-at-home mom. Um, or you didn't want to go back to work. You were dreading going back to work. And this could be a way for you to, you know, solve that issue. Or I know last time we talked, you were struggling with migraines. And I know some people that, that this has helped with migraines. So you have to tell them why you thought of them. And that's how you make it genuine. That's how you are not salesy. If you're just sending out scripted messages, but not really taking time to personally connect, that, is, that comes across as salesy or spamsy. So if you, uh, spamsy. I made that up. I mean, that's not a word, but it should be. Um, so anyways, if you, if you want to grow your business in a way that is genuine, that cares about people, and that is not salesy or spamsy, then here's how you do it. You just genuinely tell them why you thought of them, why you're excited about it. I mean, when I say, I just started this new thing, I'm really excited about it because blank, you're telling them this is, why, this is what I think it's going to do for me. Even if you don't have your own results yet. It could be products. It could be business. It doesn't matter. You have to tell people your why. Like, this is why I'm excited about it, and then this is why I thought of you. And then some magic words are, I'm just curious. If I, would you? And so you can fill in if I, would you with a number of different things. But I'm just curious takes the pressure off. It makes it sound like you're not overly excited or desperate. Um, it just You're just basically reaching out to see if they've heard of it. I'm just curious. If I did blank, would you do blank? So if I sent you a three-minute video about how gut health is, affects every aspect of our health, would you check it out and let me know your thoughts? If I shared a testimony with you, would you read it and tell me what you think? If I invited you to this online event tonight, would you take 20 minutes and watch it with me, be my guest? Um, there's a lot of things that you could fill in that blank if I would you, but it works because people naturally want to help others, especially people that they care about. If you're just getting started, you're definitely in your very warm market. That means these are people that you have a relationship with. So if you're saying, if I did this for you, would you do this? Like if I... If if I scratch your back, will you scratch mine kind of thing? And most of the time, people don't say no. I mean, you, the worst that can happen here is they might ignore it. And that's probably because they're driving down the road and they can't respond right then. And they're thinking, when my kid's down tonight, I'm going to respond. And they might forget. So that's when, that takes us to our next point, follow-up. So the first income-producing activity was new contacts. 
You have to do that consistently every single day. And the statistics show that if you do the income producing activity every single day for 10 years, 95% of you who do that for 10 years will be at the top of the company. And that's industry wide. That's not Plexus specific. In Plexus is actually much faster than that. It's probably half of the time. Um, but the statistics, you can't argue with the numbers. If you do this consistently, eventually you are going to strike gold. So new contact is the first thing, but next is follow up. So most people do not order Plexus or start your opportunity the first time they hear about it. Shayla. <laughs> or Christina or uh, any of my other level ones in this room, right? It's, it's an average of eight to 12 exposures before someone will make a purchase decision or any major decision really. Um, and that, and marketers know that that's why you hear the same commercial over and over and over and over. Right. Um, I'm sure if I started singing some jingles, you guys could sing the second half because you hear the same thing over and over and you probably buy the product. So this is no different and follow up does not have to be um, salesy or spammy either. You can also be genuine and connect with people when you are following up. So everybody that you know personally will be trying Plexus at some point over the next 10 years. They will order from somebody. They will order. I don't care how much they say no. I don't care how much they ignore you or say I'm not interested. I promise you mark my words they are going to order from somebody and i'll tell you who it will be the person who follows up because it's eight to twelve exposures so if you talk to that person about plexus four times and they're just not interested and you just assume, take that as an answer and assume they'll never be interested then guess what happens somebody else going to follow up four more times and they are going to join at some point they will join if you don't follow up, it won't be you. It will be Christine. Um, <laughs> True story for real. Here is the thing with follow up. Most people, when they get started, will send out some initial messages. They'll take my advice. They'll reach out to new people. They'll feel like it's a job well done. Most people, when it's time for that follow up, that 10 days or whenever else, they'll follow up. One time, time for that second follow-up, boy, then they start getting kind of some feelings about it. And I see Chelsea nod, I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I can follow up another time. I don't want to be <clears throat> annoying. I don't want to be sleazy. I don't want to be, spa I got, maybe I shouldn't follow up. And so, guys, here's the thing. You, there are skills you can learn to effectively follow up. Um, but I'm here to tell you, I, we have a really, really large team none of them joined on the very first go round unless they came to me guys i'm just willing to follow up people will say all the time how do you be a top prize earner how do you be any rank whatever rank it is there's always somebody that wants to be where you are so if you're in the room and you're silver there are people on our team that wish they had your rank your gold same thing so it doesn't matter what rank i've ever been i've always had people say tell me how to be that and i say it's just follow up it's just follow up just follow up about the product follows about the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Y'all, I am relentless with the follow-up. Ask Allie and Shayla. You talk about years, four years, both of them. <laughs> and listen, I'm not, I ain't even got Shayla yet, but she's about to be, she already is. <laughs> but I'm just relentless. And I, I just have a very high no tolerance because I know it's not about me. I know it's not me that they're not ready for. I know it's not me that they're not interested in. If they weren't interested in me, they would have unfriended me. That is literally what I tell myself. I'm like, Shayla, no, I'm gonna come at her again with Plexus. She knows, I'm gonna see her at the gym, I'm gonna talk to her about it. If she weren't interested, she would have just unfriended me. So it's a timing issue 100% of the time. It's a timing issue. A no means not right now. It means I'm overwhelmed with this. It means I've got this going on. It means I'm gonna go stalk the internet and come back to you. It just means a lot of different things, but it never means, no, I hate you and you're annoying. Mm -hmm. It never means that. Um, we have people all the time say, thank you for being persistent. Yo, I wouldn't be a diamond if this girl wasn't persistent. I ignored her and told her no firmly for an entire year, for a whole year. So if she had said, oh, well, I can't follow up the seventh time. She already said no, one, two, three, four, five, six times. Then I wouldn't be living the life I'm living right now. So you just have to care more about the people that you're reaching out to than you do about how you will come across, especially if you know you're coming across from a place of love. Here's the message it sends when you don't follow up. 
she's not serious. That's exactly what is perceived. If you follow up a few times and don't don't continue to follow up, you're, they just think you're not serious about it. I mean, people want to know that you're serious, and you're 100% accurate when you say it's a timing issue, because you just never know when something's going to change for somebody. And here's the thing with follow up too: if first of all, follow up is what separates successful people from unsuccessful people in this business, because anybody can sell a product. Um, especially if you are a trustworthy person and you have integrity, you will have some measure of success. But if you want to go the distance, you absolutely have to be willing to follow up. This is the thing that separates like highly successful people from people who just got a little bit of success in it. Okay, so this is what separates those. And it comes from your belief. What will determine your willingness to follow up with people is what you believe. What are you believing about our products? Do you really believe they need these products? Your friend who's struggling with migraines or fibromyalgia or thyroid issue or IBS or eczema or a number of any things that Plexus can help with, do you really truly believe that this could be an answer for them? Because if you really believe that, then you should not care about you shouldn't care more about what they're going to think of you than you do about helping them so it comes from your belief same thing with the opportunity and we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get to the du duplication pillar but when it comes to the opportunity most people cannot conceive of themselves doing something like this at first it takes a leader who's willing to follow up and by follow up when it comes to the opportunity i mean pour belief into them that they can do this because most people don't hear those compliments a lot. Um, and you just have to not, you have to see someone's potential enough to be unwilling to give up on them. This girl, I was unwilling to give up on her because I just knew that if she did this, she would be a diamond. I mean, I knew that. I felt very confident that she would be a diamond if she decided to do this. And she did think I was weird, and I didn't care. I mean, I care a little bit, but not enough. That's, that's, that's not why I thought she was weird. <laughs> why I thought she was weird is still why I know she is. <laughs> I, I, I weird. Um, but yeah, I just so you have to be willing to follow up, and there are tons of training videos that will help you master this skill of following up with people in a way that is not salesy or does not come across as pushy or desperate, okay? So that's outside of the scope of the time that we have here. But if this is a struggle for you, any if anything on this paper is a struggle for you, I guarantee you there is to infinity and beyond training videos about this very thing. Whatever it is in your business that might be a hold up for you, you train and you train and you train and you train on it until you get it. And you keep doing that. And a year from now, what's holding you up right now won't be what's holding you up in a year. It'll be something completely different because we're always learning and always growing, right? But you just have to be willing to do what it takes, okay? So these are the two major income-producing activities for you, and this is how you will enroll people. You have to be willing to bring it up, and then you have to be willing to follow up. Eight to 12 exposures is average, okay? So some people will join much sooner, some people it would take much longer, and that is okay because they all join. They all join. I've been in this company seven years, and I'm telling you, they all join. Everybody that you know will try Plexus at some point, okay? We're going to be a household name, like Mary Kay. Everybody knows who Mary Kay is, right? At this point, you either know a rep or you are a rep. Plexus will be like that. And at this point, I mean, think about Mary Kay, guys. They have about 3,000 top-level leaders in their company. And that's nationwide. Um, in Plexus, we have about 200, just a small percentage of what Mary Kay has. It's wide open opportunity, wide open. You just have to be willing to learn the skills and be consistent, okay? All right, do we hang up on that? Okay. Okay. So the next thing is post on social media. So if you are, so let me just preface this part by saying that I'm thankful for social media because if we were doing network marketing 20 years ago, we would have been going door to door, 
We would have been doing parties in people's houses. Uh, we would have been cold calling people on the telephone. So I'm glad. If I had to do those things, I would not be successful. I'm an introvert, so you won't see me going door to door. But I can sit behind a computer screen and think real hard about what I want to say before I send a message. Okay, so that works for me. But I'm really glad for social media because we can say something one time and hundreds or thousands of people see it. So it is a very, very good tool for you to use to grow your business. Um, we definitely live in a social economy. So you don't 100% have to use social media to grow a successful business. But 99% of the ambassadors who are successful, they do use social media. But I know a few successful ones who... They just do sip and sees and go to people's homes and stuff like that. And that's that's fine, too. If you rather take people out on coffee dates all the time, you do that consistently every day, you're going to get somewhere. But for a lot of us, I mean, I, I have five kids, so doing coffee dates and stuff like that was not really an option for me. Um, and so social media has for sure been a good tool, especially since I lived in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so posting on social media. There's also a way to do this a way that is effective and not salesy or spammy. Mm. You want to talk about that? Oh, I got say it, girl. Say it. <laughs> so, I actually challenged my leaders the other day to do this. If you go scroll through my Facebook, you're not going to find the first, post this, join me, flash sale. P I, nothing that comes from Pinterest will you find on my page. You won't find um, very many stock photos of a pink drink. You just won't find those things. You will find me posting about Plexus every day, but it's going to be interwoven into our life. Um, and so if you're not friends with me on Facebook, you can follow me and look at it. But basically, you want your, your friends want to follow you, okay? They don't really want to be sold to. They're buying, you know, just so you know, your friends are buying. They're looking about, people are looking to send money. But they don't want to be necessarily sold to. But they are curious about what's going on in your life. And so if Jackie was up all night with the baby because, you know, baby's growing and she had over milk supply and she's celebrating that and she's posting that on Facebook, she can tie that into Plexus very easily. That could very easily be her Plexus post for the day. Balance hormones, extra milk, all the things. And you're not going to see the first hot pink from Pinterest Plexus thing. So you just want to figure out ways to tell a story about whatever's going on in your life and figure out how you can incorporate Plexus into that. Whether it's fitness posts, Delana and Terry do a great job of incorporating Plexus with their fitness posts. People are watching. They're curious, and they still want to know about your life. It just needs to be another part of it. So, I mean, my, on my Facebook, I talk about fitness a lot. I talk about finance a lot. I talk about marriage a lot, parenting a lot, nutrition a lot, Plexus a lot, Jesus a lot. I just It's just something else that's in my life. It does not capitalize on it. So, you think of it kind of like your storefront. You want a classy boutique storefront, not the airbrushed Panama City storefront. <laughs> like 27 t-shirts for 13 cents, right? So boutique is what we're going for. <laughs> yeah, you remember, you remember airbrushed shark tag? It's really good. 13 t-shirts for 27 cents. I love Panama City. Okay, um, so I, I just want to piggyback on the story thing. So remember this phrase, facts tell, but stories sell. So your timeline should basically tell the story of your life. So when somebody goes to your timeline, you need to ask yourself this question. Do they have a reason, if they are not my close friends and family, do they have a reason to follow me? Are my posts adding value to my audience? You need to figure out what you feel passionate about. Um, and you don't have to be an expert on anything. I would say you do need a, there needs to be one thing that you know just a little bit more about than most people do and share that and that will be interesting. I mean, think about what you could talk about with your best friend for hours and hours and never get tired of talking about it. That's a pretty good clue of what you're passionate about. Um, but you just need, people need to know who you are and they, that builds trust with people, especially as you get into your colder market. I mean, a lot about half of the people that I have enrolled, I've met on social media. And I've enrolled about 100, and you've enrolled probably about 400, and probably 300 of them have come from social media, right? Most so, of you in this room, I didn't know they're done social media. Yeah. And one thing I'll say about what you can talk about on social media 
it was going to be different for everybody. Like Emily could get on social media and talk about shopping and fashion and people are intrigued. If I get on there and talk about social media or fashion and shopping, people are going to call and see if I'm alive. So, and she's good at it. She has value to add there. She's going to talk about parenting, kids of all ages, because she's got them all. Grown folk all the way down to unborn folk. So she can talk about that. Um, some people are great cooks. And I, I mean, Jackie's been posting a ton of very quick new mom recipes. Y'all, I'm there. I'm like, oh, what's she got to say that's important? Like, what? Help me. Help me. So how can you help some people? You're not going to help everybody. It's not going to be for everybody. But what can you do that will add value to some people? Um, yeah. Yeah. So there's a difference between a post that says, Here's a cute picture of me and my family playing a board game on a Friday night versus here are some ideas for five free things you can do with your family on a Friday night. Or here are some ideas for what you can do around Savannah with Littles in tow. Or, you know, just find ways to give to your audience. And this is work, just so y'all know. Social media and building a brand, it's work. Um, it's not always easy. You have to put a lot of thought into it. And I find that posts that I just kind of throw up there just so I can say I've got my post in for the day, it doesn't get high engagement. But if I sit down and put a lot of thought into a post and also make sure the graphic is attractive, I generally do get high engagement, mm -hmm. okay? So Because those posts add value to people. And pe that builds trust. Yeah, and I think one thing to keep in mind is if you're adding value to yourself, you'll always have something that you can teach someone else. So I am reading, I've been doing, I, this has kind of been a strategy of mine on social media for probably a year. I started with that Everyday Millionaire book, and I just would read a chapter and get on there and make a live video about what I read. None of it was my own material. I'm just like, y'all, this man is a genius. Let me tell y'all what he says today. I have my book there. I probably had, I'm not even kidding, 25 people on Facebook message me and say, I just ordered that book. Some of them were men, some of them were women, young, old, people I thought were already wealthy. Just like, hey, thank you for talking about that book. I mean, I did the, through the entire book. Was never had to come up for the first thing, except to look like I, decent, or have a good filter, and kind of regurgitate what he said and why it was impacting my life. And that added up, people were like, oh, I need to check out that book. And I'm doing it right now with the Susie Orman book. So if you're doing something to add value to yourself, if you're learning something, anything and you're sharing that, some people will be able to connect with you. Mm -hmm. Like Allie, I call her my horse friend. She rides horses and trains them and does all this stuff. People who do that stuff find her really interesting. It is interesting. I find her interesting because I'm like, that's an amazing horse. And you just, <laughs> she just wrapped it around a barrel. Like, how did that even happen? But so she's adding value to people in that industry, but also to everybody else. It's unique. She's unique. I don't have a lot of horse friends. Yeah. And so it's interesting. And you get you get very high engagement on your post about that. Very high engagement. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have to have a super interesting life to build a successful brand, just so you know, because my life is not super interesting. I'm an introvert. I don't ride horses. I got a lot of kids. So maybe it was interesting. I don't know. But, I mean, I love what Christina said. Add value to yourself first, and you will have something of value to offer other people. And it doesn't necessarily be that you have to teach somebody something. Um, you can empower people. You can entertain people. Um, and you could equip people. I mean, there's lots of ways to add value, but you do need to be focused on how can I give to my audience. Like, how can I inspire? How can I relate? How can I give? Yeah, they wanted to see all the story. I mean, you guys know, most of you know I was training for a fitness competition. There was nothing I could teach anybody about it. I had no clue. I learned something every single day, but just putting it out there, that that's what I was doing, and being willing to kind of capture the journey all along, mm -hmm. you, again, would be very surprised at how much people were interested in something that I did not even know about. Like, I actually branded myself uh, first-time bikini pro. No clue. They mm -hmm. were interested, though. And that makes me think of people posting about Plexus before they even get their products. Because some people think, well, once I get my results and I can post that and then I can really believe in it and work this. But no, I mean, people will follow a story. They want to know, is this legit? Like, if you post, hey, I started this new thing. I'd love some people to do it with me. And then you give updates. People will follow that. They love to, to follow a story or a journey or whatever. And I mean... Every so often you go on there and you say, I just slept the best I've slept in years. Or I noticed I have a little more pep in my step today. Or I didn't bite my kid's head off this afternoon. Or I didn't go to the DG and get me some chocolate. 
but whatever the case may be for you, you update people. People find that very interesting, and they do like to follow a story. So as far as Plexus is concerned and posting about Plexus, I honestly feel like I have to kind of earn my right to sell Plexus to people. I feel like I need to be given so much value that it's okay if I am selling a product. That doesn't take any value away, and it doesn't make me sound salesy or spammy because I'm offering a lot of value to my audience. And so I could post about Plexus, but, and nobody's going to unfollow me because they're, they don't want to miss out on my other posts, right? Not saying nobody unfollows me, because I'm sure they do, especially as of late. Um, <laughs> hashtag, she got opinions. Hashtag, yeah, got opinions. So anyways, uh, but people like opinions. They really do. I would stay away from anything that is extremely controversial and divisive, but... But what, what? I said until you're a diamond. <laughs> until you're a diamond, yes. So I was that now. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, but they will. So your opinion is going to be like a magnet. It's going to attract some people. It'll repel others. And that's okay. I feel like I'm attracting some smart folks if they agree with me. <laughs> so anyway, oh, you got to post consistent. <laughs> <laughs> And if they disagree, I don't want to pull with them anyway. All right, anyway, I'm just kidding, y'all, kind of. So post consistently, tell stories, make plexus fit into the narrative of your life. If you're posting somebody else's story, that's good too. If you have an attractive graphic and you're posting some story that's inspiring, people read those testimonies. They really do read those testimonies. You might think they'd scroll on past, but I promise you. They will read those testimonies and they will be inspired. Yeah, add, add a cute hook though. Like, don't just start. Jackie says, and then her story, add yeah. a cute hook. Like, oh my gosh, when I read this, this is what, it, like, add something. Else. Yeah, it spoke to me for this mm -hmm. reason. Okay, so that's social media. Now, this is important, especially for the next thing we're going to talk about, which is add three new friends every day. But your social media presence is going to be what um, gets people to trust you. Okay, especially if they don't know you. So if you're reaching out to five new people every single day, eventually you run out of people, unless you're doing the next step every single day, and that's making new friends. So this could be online or offline. It doesn't really matter. But every single day, if you're serious about going to the top of this company, you have to expand your network every single day. And you can do that by, if you're doing it not online, you can meet new people by just going to church, joining things that you're interested in. I mean, at the ball field, I mean, there's lots of ways to meet new people every single day. You have to be intentional about it. I mean, you can meet new people at the grocery store. How intentional are you to strike up a conversation with that cashier or that, that never mind, said that. Um, anyway, so, or you can do it on social media. And I've done that a ton. So uh, generally, I will join a group of people that are like-minded. And um, I'm looking for a group that probably has at least 10,000 or so people in it. And for me, when I first started, I joined a group called Christian Homeschooling Moms because that was very specific, kind of like who I was. I mean, I'm a Christian and I homeschool my kids. So I like connecting with other people who do the same thing. And so... I have been able to build my business connecting with like-minded people. And I would post in the group my opinion, or I'd go in the group and comment on other people's stuff and just do what I could to add value. And that only takes about five minutes a day. But if I post something and it's my opinion and people click like or they commented on it and they agree, then I just spread them all. I'm like, these are the people I want. Uh, these are smart people. So, um, so I've expanded my network that way, and it's, it's allowed me to build a community of like-minded people, right? It's probably one reason why we don't have drama, because everybody think like me. <laughs> we all agree. We're in unison. Um, I'm just kidding, y'all. So I know we have diversity, which I appreciate. But anyway, so you can find a group on Facebook for um, anything that you're interested in. It really doesn't matter what it is. I mean, it could be anything. If you're a nurse, find a nurse group. If you're a teacher, find a teacher group. If you're a nursing mom or you're expecting or you're going to grad school, I mean, I don't know. You can find a group about anything that you're interested in. It really, gardening. I'm taking some examples. There are gardening groups. 
I mean, I'm not. I didn't. I'm just saying. I, 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 I need to join one. Of hunting. Hunting horses. Horses, yeah. Uh, parenting teens. There's my parenting toddlers. Parenting, parenting teens. They're toddlers. Shopping. Hair. Y'all, there's a group for anything. There's a group. There's a swimming group. Swimming. Swimming. What is there to discuss about swimming? But there's a walking class in college, so. Find you a group. So, yeah, find one or two groups to focus on every day. And this needs to be a daily habit if you're doing this on social media, okay? Because some of y'all are going to meet people in person. But if you're actually intentional about using social media to connect with people you didn't know before, which is what I had to do because I didn't know anybody and I lived way out in the country and had a lot of kids, I had to use groups. That's how I did it, okay? And so whenever I'm friending people that I don't know, first of all, I make sure they're not crazy and that they are like-minded. And then they, the first thing they're going to do is go to your page and it, be like, who is this person? You know, if you, they're getting a friend request from somebody they don't know. They're going to your page. And depending on the quality of your post, they will accept or not. Okay? So that's how you do it. Be consistent with your posting. Be consistent with expanding your network. If you do this every day, you will never, ever run out of people to talk to. Now, let's just say you are friending a bunch of people that you don't know. And then you go to sit down to do your income producing activity and you're messaging people. I mean, they, your brand is what is going to determine whether they trust you or not. So it is super important to do these things every day. All right, next thing. Comment on your top potentials list, at least 10 comments. So I said this on the team call the other night, but Facebook will actually allow you to put your friends lists in categories. You can actually create friends lists. Um, so you can name the list. Like I have one called my team. So if I want to go support all my team members who, who are posting about Plexus, I can just click on that list and it'll show me posts from only people who are on my team. And that way I can bam, 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 just really quickly scroll through and comment on all their posts and support my team. Or I have one called um, non-Plexus or top potentials. And if I friend somebody and I think this person has a lot of potential or they really need my products, then I'm putting them on that top potential list. That way, five minutes every day, I can go directly to that list. It shows me only posts from those people who are on that list. And I just bam, 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 comment. Just that way you're staying engaged. Especially the more you post about Plexus, the more Plexus people are going to comment on your post. And eventually it can be like, oh, Facebook thinks that the only people that you interact with our plexus people and so it could be like you only start seeing plexus people's posts so to prevent that from happening you just have to be intentional about staying engaged with people who are not plexus people and that's how you can do it divide your people into lists it's easier to do when you first start don't wait until you have thousands of friends to do that if you already have thousands of friends you just don't try to take three days because that's how long it would take you to divide the whole thing up you can just start now i have teamsy and so teamsy will actually populate your friends list and it'll pop up names every day for people you can reach out to um and so every day when it tells me go re reach out to suzy q then i'll go to her page and i'll just determine is this a plexus person or a non-plexus person and i'll put her on the list accordingly if it's a non-plexus person then i'll go ahead and reach out and ask her if she's heard of plexus with my first message formula that i just shared with you guys um, but if it's a Plexus person, then I'll put her on the Plexus list, okay? Does that make sense? There's a YouTube video about how to divide your people into friends list. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and then wish your Facebook friends a happy birthday. Everybody likes to be told happy birthday. So you can see who has a birthday that day on your events, and you just go to their wall and make sure you say their name. Happy birthday, Susie Q. Um, that makes it even more effective, but just to tip, just that, that way everybody on your friends list, you're staying engaged with them. If you're commenting on their posts at least once a year, you'll at least see some of their stuff, right? So tell everybody happy birthday. All right. Anything else about recruiting? All right. So there's lots of, we just kind of flew through that very quickly. And I think that most people in here are already great recruiters, but some of you are new. So you just need to know this is how you enroll people. It's just a consistent process, just work you do every single day, and then eventually they join. Okay? Do we need to talk about this? Recording?